Well, Kabani, you're a long way from home. What brings you to Tunbridge Wells? Why are you here? Why am I here filming uh, the Ollie Nichols documentary? And how did you come to hear about Ollie? Uh, my friend Alexander Whittle gave me one of his CDs um, and said that, you know, my CD reminded her of some of his stuff and vice versa. And uh, when I listened to it, I was very pleasantly surprised. I mean, I was very moved by his lyrics, um, his music, uh, his voice, you know. And I'm quite particular about music. I mean, I listen to different kinds of music and uh, when it comes to lyrics, I'm very particular. How long ago did you first hear all his music? Say, just over a year and a half. Um, I think it was about a year and a half ago. And where were you? In a car? At home? No, at my home actually, in my home office I think. Um, and I really didn't know what to expect, you know. I, I get handed CDs quite frequently. And, you know, I just thought oh, it was going to be just another CD. And then I was really mesmerized. I mean, I've, I've been moved by music before, you know, not that frequently, but not to this level, not to this point. Um, you know, I think it's the songs, but it's also meeting people he knew. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of finding out about someone else through his friends, his family, people who worked with him, this great community of people. You know, I mean, I again, last night was magical because I got to hear amazing music in a little place called Tunbridge Wells. I'd never heard of it, you know, I, I mean, so it was, it was great to kind of be part of that, to just be there. And when did you realize that there was something different about this CD, that you were listening to something really quite special? I think from the very first song, um, you know, in or out. Um, I mean, I thought the lyrics were great, the story, the, you know, I could relate to it basically about, you know, not feeling like you belong here. I could, you know, I could really connect with the sensitivity the lyrics and I think you know I could already feel that it was someone who felt like you know there's a lot wrong with the world we live in and uh, you know that I just kind of connected with this sensitivity I think. I know you've been very supportive of up and coming artists who quite often buy their CDs. When did you know you were going to do something different about Ollie? Well it actually happened very quickly I mean before I even bought the CDs I thought you know what I just had this gut feeling that I needed, you know, that his music deserved to be heard by more people than just a few of my friends, you know, and I just thought it would be, you know, really, really important to do something. Um, and this is before I knew he wasn't even with us anymore, you know, so it was really important. I think, I don't know, it was uh, just a gut feeling. I, you know, most of my creative projects, I go with my gut. I don't, you know, I never do anything because I think it's going to be successful. And when and how did you know that you'd made the right decision? Well, I mean, one of the things is I knew, you know, just within weeks of working on the project that my gut instincts were right for me. You know, they, it just, that's what I needed to do. And there was something very special about him, not just his creative work, you know, uh, just as a human being. Since listening to that CD all those months ago, what other aspects of Ollie have you come to discover while making your documentary? Well, those two particular things, you know, his poetry, his other forms of writing. So it wasn't just lyrics, he'd actually written poetry. He, you know, his uh, sense of humor, his witty, um, you know, lyricism in non-poetical uh, forms of writing as well. You know, he'd done creative writing, he'd done uh, plays, you know. And there was always this kind of, I, I love the juxtaposition. There was always this kind of, you know, cheerfulness and positivity but there was also this kind of artistic almost not pessimism or melancholy. yeah i would say melancholy a lot of you know creative types including myself we we kind of we're not you know we're multifaceted in many ways you're in a unique position coming to get to know ollie through the um, the soundscape of his life the memories of his friends and family what have the challenges been in making this documentary? And what are some of the things that have stood out about the Ollie that you have come to know and love over this process? And I think 
some of the things that really stand out are his, you know, wit, his humor, his generosity, um, and I think encouragement. I mean, that's something, you know, that I was impressed by with your own website. You know, the fact that you're doing something, because I've always been into community and like, you know, trying to support creative artists and stuff like that, because I think that's something, I come from a culture that unfortunately doesn't support creativity as much, at least growing up. So, you know, in the Middle East, it's not really, you know, being a musician wasn't always encouraged, um, you know, or being creative. So that's not to say that we don't have creative people and very talented people, but it's, you know, not something that, and I think, you know, if I had a bit more support um, initially, I think that would have been something. So I kind of connect with that. And I think from what I've heard, Ali's very generous with his support of artists, making them feel at ease. I think as a sound engineer and a mixing engineer, that's really, really important. Yesterday evening, many of us had the privilege of attending and some of us performing at the tribute evening for Ollie at the Grey Lady. How special was that to you, Wow? That was very special for me too. I mean, I got to hear all of you amazing people. I mean, we basically went into the Grey Lady. One of the ideas was that, you know, he played there. He was the sound man for quite a few years. He helped Paul Dunton start this, um, you know, evening basically that became so popular according to most people that they needed to have it twice a week instead of once a week. And um, it was great because, I mean, I had a chat with you and we heard your beautiful song, which I love, um, you know, that you'd written about Ollie and for him and memory of him. And um, so it was great to kind of bring many of the people that had either played with him in different bands or people that had recorded with him um, or collaborated with him and, you know, just having his friends and family there. The artist, it, the artist didn't even care that cameras were there. You know, they were themselves. It was a genuine thing. And it just resonated with so many, so many people came over and, said it was, you know, a magical evening, and, um, and that's how I felt. I mean, I, I really was moved by the whole thing. And the sense of community, that was so important, I think. That was, that was what, you know, that's what I got from talking to everyone. It was very Ollie-esque, you know. I know you like a lot of Ollie songs, many of us do. Are there any ones that really stick out for you personally? And if so, why? Well, I mean... I love all of them, to be honest with you, but some of my favorites are In or Out, as I've mentioned before. Um, I mean, I, I like the witty, uh, you know, way that he kind of used a lot of uh, Beatlesque, uh, you know, references in the second one, uh, Purple Rain Cloud, or Rain, the Purple Rain Cloud, I think it's called. And um, I really like Box. Um, I think you know that that was that's quite powerful. Um, Figment is great. I mean, you know, I, I've always kind of connected with this whole thing about, you know, um, organized religion. And, you know, I, probably the concept is a good one, but the way humans kind of manipulate it and stuff like that, it doesn't always work for me. Um, there's so many good ones. I mean, you know, wonderful thing. Bubble is very bubbly, uh, very cheerful musically, but, you know, Again, that's something that I tend to do with my music. Sometimes the music might be quite cheerful, but the lyrics might be quite um, poignant and, you know, a bit darker or deeper. So one thing that really surprised me about the album is I don't often enjoy, um, you know, instrumentals as much. I'm really more of a very into lyrics. I'm primarily a lyricist and melody maker, but um, for me, usually I connect with songs that have a lot of lyrics. Um, I mean, or at least tell a story. They don't have to be very wordy or anything like that. But I think what really surprised me is I love his piano playing and, you know, the subtle production that little touches here and there that were still, you know, they weren't overly produced. Nothing felt to me that it was overly produced. And in what way has this documentary impacted on your own life? In what way do you think uh, Ollie's music and Ollie's life may have touched you? Kind of it, it relit something in me. I think, you know, I've talked to different artists, including yourself, and um, they said, you know, they hadn't done music in a while. They, it kind of had taken a back seat or, you know, was on the back burner for a while. And, and uh, 
like Ian Knapp, for example. He hadn't played in two years, and he opened the show for us uh, last night. So that was quite amazing. And you know, to have more people say that you know, Ollie in some way, you know, has got them back into music, and I think that's kind of what Ollie was about. It. And what can we expect in the finished documentary? I think I would just get bored probably if I just did a regular documentary. So it's these wonderful things, but it's also like you know having other creative people reinterpret Ollie's work. So not just the musicians. I mean that's wonderful, but also dancers. You know,、um, chore- you know, there's a choreography for one of his songs. That's going to be out, and then also some animation. Because I work in music, film, and animation; those are the three mediums I usually work in. And so there will be some animation,、um, you know, retelling one of his songs through animation. So I'm really excited about that to see how all that,、um, you know, comes together. I mean, we had amazing footage from yesterday, and we're hoping to not only have the documentary, but、uh, also. Maybe a DVD of the evening. So we're going to be contacting you and the rest of the artists that were part of、um, last night, and、uh, you know, asking permission to use that and maybe turn the evening into a DVD that might accompany the documentary and then also a live、uh, CD recording. So I'm very excited about that.